I was born on September 6, 2015 in Venezuela. Her mother, Andrena Bermudos Milan, was from Maturin, Managas. Her father, Leonardo Salazar, was from Tucupido, a town in the state of Delta Amakiro. A year after Paula was born, in September 2016, the couple decided to immigrate with their child to Ecuador. They were looking for a better life for themselves and their daughter. A month after moving to Quito, the capital of Ecuador, the relationship in the family deteriorated for a number of reasons. Andrena decided to break up with Leonardo and soon moved to Cuenca, the third largest city in Ecuador. She took Paula with her. In Cuenca, they lived with the mother of her best friend, who kindly offered to let them stay in the house while they found another place to live and to work. Leonardo, the girl's father, given the breakup and other circumstances, decided to return to Venezuela, to his hometown of Tucupido. After a while, he immigrated again, this time to Trinidad and Tobago. At the time, Leonardo had already been disabled for a long time. The man's left arm had been completely disabled after an accident he had suffered while driving a motorcycle at a very young age. Since the man could not use his left arm, it was apparently difficult for him to find a good job, even in Ecuador's capital city. After Andrina moved to Cuenca, she almost completely stopped communicating with Leonardo, only informing him once that she has taken a job on a farm in Tapacundo. A few months after separating from Leonardo, Andrina entered into a new romantic relationship with a man named Washington Andromero. Washington was a local Ecuadorian, and more importantly, he was the owner of the farm where Andrina worked. The men grew up in a wealthy family. When Paula was about a year and a half, Andrina moved to a man together with Paula. Andreas and Andrina had a child together on April 7, 2019. With a newborn baby, the family became happier and more united. However, everything changed when an event happened on March 27, 2020. It completely changed the lives of everyone involved. At the time, the family was living well, enjoying every day, and things were going well on the farm. On one such day, as happy as it seemed, Andreas took Paula and, by car, went with her to the flower plantations. On the way there, the girl got very sick. She became dizzy and began to vomit. Andreas had no choice but to stop at the public restroom. As soon as he and the girl entered it, Paula vomited again. He decided to leave her alone for a few minutes and went back to the car to find a change of clothes, since the girl's clothes were all dirty. When Andreas returned, he found Paula lying with her head in the toilet bowl. The man immediately pulled the girl out, tried to give her first aid, and soon brought her to the hospital. When the four-year-old girl was handed over to doctors, she no longer showed any signs of life. Doctors stated Paula was dead. After the doctors on duty performed an initial examination and assessed the girl's condition, they realized that the story Andreas told them was full of inconsistencies. For example, the doctors determined at the first glance that the girl had bruises on her body and face, the nature of which could not be attributed to the information her foster father told them. Medical protocol in such cases requires doctors to contact the police. Indeed, the situation itself suggested this. Shortly after the police arrived, Andreas was arrested as a suspect in Paula's murder. Although Andrena said Paula had drowned in the toilet bowl, the autopsy of the body revealed something much darker. First of all, the test showed that the girl had been dead for about 24 hours when she arrived at the hospital, which doesn't fit with the man's version of events. The girl's foster father claims that he gave Paula first aid and cardiopulmonary resuscitation, and that all this happened just 20 minutes before he took her to the hospital. On the other hand, the autopsy found that the girl has several broken ribs, multiple microtraumas, a cracked spine, and sepsis, which caused her death. It became apparent that Paula's death was not an accident, as her small body has a significant number of both recent and old injuries. Leonardo Salazar, the girl's father, learned of Paula's death on March 33 days after the events. His mother, who was still in Venezuela, had informed him of his daughter's death by the phone. She herself, in turn, learned it from Andrina's friend. It should be mentioned that after Leonardo has left Ecuador and Andrina had started a new relationship, she stopped all communication with him. That is why for three days Leonardo didn't know anything about her tragedy. Until that time, he could see her only through the pictures Andrina and his mutual friends had sent him. In addition, Andrina blocked Leonardo on all social media, preventing him from communicating with Paula. 
She also cut off communication with almost all of Leonardo's relatives, and Andrena even turned almost all of their mutual friends against the girl's birth father, telling them about his lack of desire to communicate with Paula. So, Leonardo was able to learn of his daughter's death. However, Andrena's family informed him of an alternative cause of death. They told him that Paula died of complications caused by COVID. At the time, Ecuador, like the rest of the world, was under quarantine due to the pandemic. However, there were virtually no deaths from the coronavirus in the country. Leonardo was undoubtedly very suspicious that his daughter might have died from COVID, so he immediately began researching statistics on death from the virus in Ecuador. The statistics were posted on social media and news websites. Leonardo immediately noticed that there were no children among the few victims of the coronavirus in Ecuador. Leonardo's relatives helped him to investigate, and one of them soon sent him a newspaper article that mentioned the arrest of Andreas, who was suspected of killing Paula. Leonardo then began calling Andrina daily, and it wasn't until 10 days later that she decided to call him back herself. In that conversation, Andrina rather coldly informs Leonardo that Paula had died of COVID, and that she could not give him more information because her lawyers had forbidden her to do so. The next step Leonardo took was to create a Facebook page, together with an acquaintance of his, dedicated to Paula, as well as an Instagram profile called Justice for Paula. The published posts caused a huge backlash across social media. Their main goal was to bring those responsible for his daughter's death to justice. On the same day that Andrina called Leonardo, she arrived at the morgue to begin dealing with her daughter's funeral. Even though the prosecutor who worked on the case asked for more time to investigate the body, the girl's funeral took place on April 10, 2020. Andrina simply did not allow a second autopsy to be performed on the girl. Thanks to the information posted on social media and Andrina's friends, people in her circle contacted Leonardo and told him about the sad life Paula had in the years before her death. They sent Leonardo the information they had most of which was based on isolated recordings of conversations, photos, audio recordings, and similar things. According to witnesses, ever since Paula's mother moved in with Andreas, the girl had to endure abuse from her stepfather as well as her own mother. Not only did Andrena allow her daughter to be treated this way, but she herself was directly involved in all of this. Everyone said that they only saw Paula happy and cheerful when she was playing alone. In the presence of her stepfather, the girl looked depressed, acted shy, and became suddenly very frightful. At one point, the little girl told people she knew that her mother and stepfather beat her because she misbehaved. One day, she even confessed that as punishment, Andreas pushed her, and she hit her head on the wall. Paula called her stepfather nothing less than a monster and was undoubtedly very afraid of him. The little girl constantly had nightmares, and as a young child, she already suffered from insomnia. The couple initially preferred that the girl, who was two years old at the time of moving into the stepfather's home, sleep alone. When falling asleep, she often cried, but no one paid any attention to her. In addition, her mother and stepfather forced her to tuck in on her own without help. Moreover, her mother, Andrena, had been teaching her how to cook since she was two years old. This was something out of the realm of reason. Paula was forced to cook her own breakfast and dinners because her mother liked to sleep in the mornings and take a break from the baby in the evening. She simply didn't want to take care of her daughter. Not only that, Andrina was not bothered by the fact that the girl had to cope with baking oven by herself, despite the dangers. At the preschool where mother had placed Paula, the girl constantly complained of pain in her legs and back and often stated that she could not walk. Her constant complaints, as well as the bruises on her body, forced the teacher to show her to the doctors at the health center. After an examination, they concluded that the girl was being mistreated in the family. The girl's teachers then called the special police organization so they could investigate the girl's abuse in her family. Officials took up the case and decided to send the girl somewhere she could be safe while the investigation process was underway. As a result, on October 16, 2019, Paula was temporarily transferred to her uncle and Andrina's brother. A hearing on the case was set for December 4, 2019. Unfortunately, the teachers who were supposed to testify never showed up. For whatever reason, they were unable to attend this hearing. As a result, it was decided to schedule a retrial for February 27, 2020. But even this time, all us teachers simply did not show up. The court was forced to dismiss all charges against Paula's parents, and then she was returned to her mother. 
Exactly one month later, on March 27, the girl died. The exact reason the teachers did not want to attend either of the two hearings is still unknown. It is speculated that Andrina may have bribed the teachers or simply convinced them that although the girl had some problems, the parents were not responsible for what their daughter said about them. After Paula's death, Andreas was placed in protective custody for the duration of the investigation, but he soon appealed to this decision. As a result, a hearing was held on June 12, 2020, in which the judge set a restraining order and also determined that the man could be released to house arrest. But during the hearing, which was held via video conference, Andreas announced that he was dropping his appeal. At the time, Leonardo was still engaged in a social media campaign. He also asked his subscribers for financial support to be able to travel from Trinidad and Tobago to Ecuador. He wanted to file a complaint against Andrina, Paula's mother, before it was too late. At the time, Andrina had not yet been charged and was free. Fortunately, Leonardo was able to obtain sufficient financial aid, as well as free legal advice from two Ecuadorian lawyers, Oswaldo and Alejandro, who unselfishly offered him support and assistance in the lawsuit. Leonardo had to cross the border between Trinidad and Venezuela. He had to risk his life, float on a raft, and then cross the entire border from Maturin to San Cristobal. He had to book private transfers since the pandemic had canceled all services and he could not use the usual routes to get to Ecuador. Because of the pandemic situation, all maritime and land borders of Venezuela were closed, so only a few regular flights to four or five countries could be counted in the following months. Once Leonardo arrived in the state of Taquera, he had to cross the border into Colombia over rugged terrain, dangerous in itself. He then took a bus to the town of Ipoliso and continued on through the hills and plains to the Rumichic Bridge, the border between Colombia and Ecuador. Then Leonardo took a cab and drove to Quito. On June 30, he had a meeting with a lawyer immediately upon arrival. The father of the deceased girl filed a complaint against the ex-girlfriend to also be considered as a suspect in Paula's murder. On July 6, 2020, Andrena was indicted and the woman appeared in court, which stated that she should not be remained in custody and the house arrest would be sufficient and that she had to report to justice twice a week. As a result, both Andreas and Andrena were charged with murder. The maximum punishment for which in the Ecuadorian penal code was about 13 years in prison. In November 2020, the first hearing in the case was held. At the time, a specific date for the start of the trial was still to be announced. During the hearing, Leonardo's attorney spoke to their concern about Andrina's possible escape, as she had previously attempted to take her own life with pills. They also applied for Andrina to be fitted with an electronic monitoring bracelet. The judge decided to grant the lawyer's request and also reduced the number of days the suspect had to appear in court to once a week instead of two. However, a few days later, Andrena demanded to reconsider the decision of the necessity of wearing an electronic bracelet. On November 16, another hearing was held to reconsider these decisions. Undoubtedly, all these details delayed the trial, but fortunately, the judge was able to set a date. It was set for December. The trial of Andreas and Andrina did not receive extension media coverage. However, much of the information somehow made its way onto social media. And yet, because of the pandemic, which was a major topic in the information field, some of the facts went unreported. The trial began on January 14, 2021. At the time, there still wasn't any decision made about Andrina's alternative ways of imprisonment, and Andreas was held in the regional detention center. The trial was held behind closed doors, and no representative of the media was present. In addition, some of the participants connected to the hearing via video link. According to the doctor who performed the autopsy on the girl, Paula had nearly all of her spinal discs rebuilt. Some of her ribs were broken, and some had already fused. This meant that the girl has broken ribs before which had eventually healed on their own. She also had nail stigmata, a condition in which the nails grow into the skin, bruises and scratches on her face and body, fluid accumulation in her lungs, scars on her head, and lacerations on her colon. According to the assessment, it was the later injuries that caused the infection to develop and gradually lead to sepsis, which ultimately caused death. The autopsy report also confirmed that by the time Paula was taken to the hospital by Andreas, she had been dead for about 24 hours. 
The amount of internal and external injuries reflected the level of cruelty to which the little girl had been subjected, as well as the level of carelessness shown by her guardians, who had never once taken her to the doctors. On top of this, the girl was malnourished, underweight, and too diminutive for her age, with mineral and nutritional deficiencies. Regarding Paula's injuries, Andrina, the girl's mother, tried to convince her family and friends that the child had a lot of psychological problems, that the consequence of these problems was a tendency to self-torture through which Paula tried to attract attention to herself. According to the girl's mother, when her younger brother was born, Paula began to lack parental attention, stopped sleeping at night, and tried to manipulate everyone through crying. The trial also revealed that in October 2019, when Paula was supposed to remain in her uncle's custody according to the board's decision, she actually continued to stay at her parents' house and only slept at her uncle's house for a few nights. In other words, the measures taken by the police organization did not have the desired effect. In turn, it was possible to establish that in 2017, only a few months after Leonardo's departure from Ecuador, the girl began to suffer from abuse. It most likely began immediately after Andrena entered into a relationship with Andreas. The trial was attended by more than 40 witnesses of the accusing party who were able to confirm the fact that Paula had to endure abuse for at least three years of her short life. At the last hearing before the judge handed down the verdict, Andrena stated that she took sole responsibility for the child's abuse. The woman claimed that she herself had beaten Paula with a belt and at times with her fists. Through this statement, the girl's mother actually attempted to remove blame from her man. She said to the court that he was innocent, that he had nothing to do with it, and that he had never mistreated Paula. Andrena also stated that she chastised her daughter for causing her problems with her new husband. Breaking up with her new husband meant being back on the streets and losing the financial stability she could only have around this man. Taking care of her daughter was her last priority. After becoming acquainted with Paula's life situation, the judges were concerned about the couple's newborn son, but it's safe to say that this child, unlike Paula, was never abused. It must be said that Andreas has indeed chosen to exercise his right to remain silent and has never made any statement about the incident since his arrest. By February 3, 2021, Paula's trial was finished and the couple was sentenced. Both defendants were found guilty of murdering the girl. The maximum sentence for this crime is 13 years. Leonardo's original attorneys and the accusing party demanded exactly the maximum punishment for the perpetrators. But the chief judge decided to take into account an aggravating factor, namely that Paula was only four years old, which means that she could not defend herself against her attackers. As a result, the judge sentenced Andrena and Andreas to 17 years and four months in prison. According to Ecuadorian law, the convicts have three days to appeal the verdict, so the couple was expected to appeal immediately. Even though Andrena was sentenced to 17 years and four months in prison, she still remained on house arrest and did not go to jail. The fact is that the woman used her opportunity to appeal, so now the higher court needs to confirm her sentence for incarceration. In the meantime, the woman continues to comply with the measures that were originally taken, this is not the case with Andreas, as he was arrested at the time of his appearance at the hospital with a dead girl. Undoubtedly, the fact that Andrena is still at large is causing public indignation and anger, most importantly the anger of Leonardo, who is worried that the woman might take advantage of the situation to escape justice. If you are shocked by this story, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. There are others no less shocking stories from our part. We express our sympathy to Paula's father and wish him in time to recover from his terrible grief and obtain justice for Paula.